Hey everyone, I'm just doing a video today to try and help explain a few things about uh, crank pinning, uh, crank pulleys, and then I'm going to go on to uh, belt wrap kits and why um, large crank pulleys and small fixed pulleys can destroy belts and cause problems. Uh, nothing in this video is going to be about why you shouldn't do it. Uh, any modification comes with risks and... Yeah, I'm not, not against modifications. I'm just trying to explain to uh, a few people that have problems and um, hopefully this video helps. I've had a customer that has probably contacted me maybe 50 times. Actually, he's not even my customer, hasn't bought anything. Um, but I'm just trying to help a guy out and it seems like this is a, a maybe a bit of a common thing and hopefully this video helps explain it. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna go over is uh, the customer, or this guy, he has a problem with his, uh, his larger crank pulley. So this is an oversized pulley. This is a 172, I believe. Uh, this is what you call a welded pulley. So basically what happens is uh, it's an original Mercedes center and then they cut it off and then they make this new section here at a larger diameter and then weld it on. So that's what these tabs are. Um, there's a few different ways they do it. But basically, it's because they still want to use the standard um, harmonic balancer that's inside this, and it's, a, it's a, basically it's a rubber-mounted uh, unit inside there. It doesn't look like it. Uh, you'll see some people have pulley failures where this whole section comes off, or they have a pulley that wobbles. Now, what the, this guy was thought the problem was was he thought that it was wobbling here and the attachment point. Pretty much next to no chance that that's happening. If that was the case, you would find that the pulley itself would be slipping on the whole crank and it wouldn't be turning at all. So these two pulleys here can actually uh, detach from each other and the inside dampener with all the, the mass and the first set of pulleys and the second set can be running independent to each other. So this pulley here might be wobbling it might actually be wobbling from factory. Uh, it's a chance of that. There's probably only one pulley I've seen on the market that is really high end, um, and that's uh, Innovators West. And all the rest are basically a version of this. So stock Mercedes, cut the outside pulley off, put a new one on, hope for the best, see how it goes. Um, so he was basically inquiring about a crank pin kit, which is what this is. It's just a, it's a fa fancy um, jig basically. And what it does is it allows you to line up with the end of the crank and put extra dowels in halfway between the pulley and the end of the crank. So basically that's what it does. It slides inside here with a bolt like this, bang, and allows you to drill uh, two extra dowels, halfway in the crank pulley and halfway in the crank. Um, so onto the OEM setup. So from factory, uh, this is a uh, SL55 crank. And this is the bottom chain gear mechanism. So basically this slides on there. And you'll see there's a half, there's a half moon here. And this is what is referred to as a woodruff key. And you'll find that the top half of the moon is flat and it is shared between halfway between this and halfway between the pulley. So if you look at this, it's probably shared, you know, somewhere here. Now, looking at the size of this, you don't actually get a lot on the end of the crank. And you can see it inside here exactly. That's how far, try and get it to focus. That's how far it hangs on. So your attaching this big weight off the end of the crank and then off that you've got all the belts and all the supercharger and it's hanging on by probably about that much now the reason for that is uh it's basically a somewhat of a sacrificial design that if you do have a problem it will smash the woodruff key and hopefully not break the crank you're thinking, oh, why don't they just key the whole way across here and put a huge key in it and then all, you know, from from fa factory. 
You'll find that some of the diesels do that, um, but with the petrols, it's not really a big issue and they actually want it to break. If you made it in such a way that it was so strong, it's a, let's put a huge five mil key or six mil key through there and we'll put the whole length across here and we'll make it so it never comes off. If you do have a problem with this pulley and you are pushing it to the limits, it will destroy the crank. It will absolutely just tear it to shreds. So the idea is the sacrificial part is the woodruff key. Uh, in the case of running oversized pulleys, it is a benefit to put these extra dowels in it and they basically go in the end of the crank here uh, for stability because the factory woodruff key will not be enough to keep them together. And um, under higher load, um, you know, more ratio on the pulley, you will end up smashing the woodruff key, uh, spinning the end of the crank and if you're not lucky, you'll be putting a new crank in the car. Okay guys, on to the second part of the video, I'm just going to go over a few ratios and talk about um, the relationship between the crank pulley and the top pulley. Um, now, I'm sure I'm going to be inboxed by all these people who say, oh, it's not actually 23%, oh, it's not actually 168, oh, it's actually this, it's... I don't really care. This is just for illustration reasons to, uh, to show people what's going on. So this is, uh, again... For those who are running a larger crank pulley, the standard crank pulley is 152 mil, I believe, um, and uh, especially a fixed pulley at the top. So uh, the person uh, that messaged me and is having problems, he's running a 168 millimeter crank pulley and a 68 top pulley, uh, and a belt wrap kit. So I'm going to go around, uh, I'm going to explain it all, uh, and I'll, I may as well start with the belt wrap kit. So basically, um, what the belt wrap kit does is it adds another pulley in here and it increases the wrap over the top. This is because the smaller you make the top pulley, uh, the more problems you're going to have with belt slip. So the bottom pulley is quite large. It probably is not going to slip. So the smaller the diameter of the top pulley, the less surface area it's got on the belt. Uh, especially when it's going straight down. So basically, you increase the wrap on the belt, go around, and then add this pulley down the bottom here. So a lot of people are very fond of larger crank pulleys because it has such so, so much surface area that um, you don't have belt slip. And people will talk about, oh, there's more torque, uh, there's better benefits, uh, other than the fact that a larger crank pulley can... Uh, strip the woodruff key and damage your crank. So on top of that, people stack pulleys. They get a larger crank pulley and a smaller top pulley. So uh, just to go over some rough numbers, um, standard gear change when you're flogging the car, 6,500 RPM. So by the time it gets up to the top and has used the 2.47 ratio difference between the two pulleys, you're at 16,000 RPM. So basically what I was explaining to this customer was there is a good chance that your pulley that you think is wobbly and is uh, throwing a belt, it might actually not be the case. So what's happening is as you're racing down the road and you hit 6,500 RPM and it changes gears, the supercharger at the top on the input is doing 16,000 RPM. On inside of the pulley, inside the snout of the supercharger, there is an extra step up gear of about 30%. So your supercharger rotors are doing nearly 21,000 RPM. At the point when you race along and it comes up to 6,500 RPM and changes gears, basically this is what's happening with your belt speed. It's going from 21,000 odd back down to 16,000 because it's about the same 30% change between 6,500 and let's say 5,000 RPM. It does this very quickly. I'm going to say one second. It's not, but it's just easy to say that. So basically what's happening, and this happens a lot with fixed pulleys, is there is no slip in it. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. Basically the clutch uh, is designed to allow for some slip acceleration and deacceleration. When you fix that, there is no slip whatsoever. So your crank pulley is uh, sending the belt up to you at this RPM, uh, change gears, bang, down again, up again. So a lot of people find that they throw a belt around this area because what's happening is 
your supercharger turbines, all the weight, all the cogs, everything involved, uh, is doing 21,000 RPM, and all of a sudden it's being told, no, you've got to do 16,000 RPM now. So it's a big change quite quickly, and what happens is when you have a belt wrap kit on there, it's got so much grip that something's got to give. So it's probably not going to break the crank. It's probably not going to break the top pulley. It's probably not going to break these because they're just really uh, to keep the belt on track. What it's going to do is it's going to destroy the belt. It's going to throw it off uh, because it's got nowhere to go. So one thing I did uh, tell a cu this, this certain person is that he should potentially try a longer belt. And the reason is the tighter the belt, the higher up your tensioner is. Now, under load, if it's already super tight, it's got nowhere to go. If you have a longer belt, the tensioner can actually sit down lower and it has more movement when it needs it. So when the belt's under extreme stress and the engine loads it up and it flicks up and it's going to try and throw it off the top pulley, you might have more luck. Now, it might not be the solution. The most solution might be to get rid of the belt wrap kit. So a lot of the guys that run the... Uh, the NA compression um, monsters, whatever you want to call them. Um, what they end up doing is they end up running a larger crank pulley, a stock top pulley, and no belt wrap kit. So they can still get the boost they want. You know, it's 13, 14, 15 PSI, but it stops throwing belts. Now, in saying that, I did say before, the best crank pulleys I've seen are Innovators West. Uh, hello, Dan from Innovators West. Um that's what pretty much all of the big um, high compression builds run, and it's the best bet you have. Sure, if you want to run a belt wrap kit, you're also going to run into more problems. It's not the pulley. It's not this bottom pulley. It's the fact that when you've got nowhere to go and it's a fixed pulley here and a fixed pulley there, something's got to give, and it ends up being the belt. Now, on top of that, I've just put down here 500 horsepower. So most of these, you know, uh, modified Mercedes, 500 horsepower at the crank. That is a lot of power and it's not going to be slowed down or, or decrease in speed. It's not really going to be affected at all by this supercharged drop shot. Even though it has a lot of um, rotational mass, it is an enormous amount of power. So to give you an idea, some of the bigger CNC machines, they run a 15 or um, you know, 20 maybe, possibly like a 25 horsepower engine, and they absolutely rip shreds out of steel. They throw metal everywhere. You, you'd be amazed at the amount of power they have. So this has got 500 horsepower to spin the crank, and it's not going to stop it, basically. And the weakest link, even the best belt you buy, the best system is going to be the belt. So... I hope this video helps explain a few things. Um, again, I'm not against modifying cars. I've modified my car a lot. I'm not saying don't do it. But what I'm saying is just be aware that every uh, cause has an effect. And especially when you're running a fixed pulley, you may end up destroying belts. Um, I'll go on to noises and other things about fixed pulleys later. Uh, that'll be another video. And I'm sure people will harass me and... and uh, and talk about but uh, this one is basically just saying if you're running a large pulley on the crank uh, a small pulley on the top and it's a fixed pulley and you're having belt issues it's probably because of the change in rpm when you change gears you can possibly test this by just revving the car if you haven't changed the the ecu setup uh, it won't let you rev it past 3500 rpm but a slow increase uh, in gear Basically, if you were just cruising along in second gear and you get the RPM right up 6,500 and you back off slowly, uh, to me, that would tell you that the only time it's throwing a belt is during rapid deacceleration when you're changing gears. So uh, best of luck to everyone out there. Hopefully this explains a bit. And um, yeah, keep modifying.